So there are 1.7 billion unbanked people in the world. These are people without an ID, without a fixed address. They don't have access to financial services. They cannot ask for a loan. They cannot uh, try to create a small company to get out of poverty. Many of them are women escaping war and difficult conflicts in many countries. There are refugees. So the United Nations and the World Food Program created this system based on blockchain technology so that they assign to each one of these refugees a wallet where they can get a digital voucher that they can use to purchase food and other goods. They started this in Pakistan with only 100 refugees, and they, they extended it to 10,000 refugees in a Syrian refugee camp in Jordania. Not only they could use this as a great uh, payment system, but they also um, were capable of doing loans between them, and then they could um, have a, a history, some kind of credit record that they could take with them when they leave the refugee camp. This is the kind of impact that blockchain technology can do in the world. So what is blockchain anyway? Blockchain is a decentralized, persistent, transparent, public, append-only ledger. I know, I know. I lost half of you right there. So let's break it down together, right? Imagine you have a magic notebook, a ledger where you can keep track of who owns what and who transacts what. But this magic ledger is magic because every time uh, you write something on the ledger, all your friends and colleagues that share the same identical ledger have the same information automatically. And everyone that writes something in this ledger, that information appears magically in your identical copy of the ledger. Okay? Now, the magic be behind this ledger is called cryptography and cryptoeconomics. Now, it's transparent because you can see all the transactions from the very first one to the last one. Nothing is hidden. It's permanent because every time you write something, it's virtually impossible to remove it. Nobody can erase it. Nobody can tamper with it. And it's public because everyone is free to join the network and join the ledger. But there is one more trick that these ledgers allow us to do, and it's to write smart contracts. Now, you might be wondering, what are smart contracts? Well, in fact, smart contracts is just fancy terminology for computer code. To be honest with you, they are neither smart nor contracts. But let me show you exactly uh, what one smart contract looks like. This is a smart contract that I created. It's quite simple. It has only two functions, one to deposit and one to withdraw. I can deposit with my private key anytime I want. And then my daughter can withdraw with her private key only in the year 2035, when she is responsible enough to make a responsible use of all the millions she will inherit. <laughs> Allow me to dream. Now, what is more important about this uh, smart contract is the following. Even if I pass away before that date, I can be sure that this contract can be enforced without having to trust any lawyer, any bank. I don't need to trust any corporation, I don't need to trust any government. In fact, I don't need to trust any institution of any kind. My daughter just needs to make a transaction to this smart contract in the blockchain, and the code will execute. Code becomes law. If you are thinking about what blockchain is providing us, it can be summarized in one single word, and that is trust. It's allowing us to streamline processes in the way that was not feasible before is allowing us to have a more transparent world. It allows us to remove unnecessary intermediaries. If you think about the way the internet transformed the way humanity exchanged information, the blockchain can transform the way we exchange value. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to say blockchain is going to solve all the problems of the world save the rainforest, and perhaps even the reproduction issues of the pandas in the jungle. That is not what I am trying to say. In fact, blockchain has several limitations. One of them is scalability. Scalability is hard. Do you remember maybe 30 years ago when it took three hours to download one picture from the internet? Today we are streamlining high-definition movies in real time. So we are working on these problems. Here at BSC, we are working on scalability. Today, it's 
three orders of magnitude faster than use a centralized database than to use the blockchain. But we are working on solutions for that. Another problem is efficiency. Blockchains are really inefficient today. If you think about the Bitcoin network, for example, it consumes over 7 to 2 terawatt hours of energy per year. That is more energy than the entire country of Switzerland consumes in a year. This is, of course, completely unsustainable. But then again, don't despair. We are working on solutions, and we already have a few implementations on how to solve this problem to make blockchain technology more efficient. So this is what I wanted to, say, to tell you, that we at BSC are working on these problems, scalability, efficiency, sustainability for blockchain, so that this can have a real impact in the world in the future. Now, the European Commission is very well aware of both the limitations, but also the potential of blockchain technology. So they have created this blockchain European Blockchain Observatory to monitor the evolution of this technology. And they have invested over 300 million euros over the last five years in this technology. But there is still a lot of work to do. We need a lot of experts to work on this. We need experts in distributed computing. We need experts in cryptography. We need experts in peer-to-peer -peer networks. We need experts in machine learning. We need people that take the technology and apply it to their use case, to their specific application, to my specific needs. What is going to be the next killer application for blockchain technology? But the good news is that I am standing in a room full of those experts. So guess what I'm really trying to say is that we need you. Thank you. <laughs>